Hi viewers, welcome to the community of Las Cuevas and we are here today to talk to a lady who has some very interesting pieces of work that we're going to share with you, the public. And it's my pleasure to be here. I think this is the second time I'm here and you would have seen her before on this television station, but she has done so much more since then. So I found it fitting to come back and highlight what's new. And we will be talking to her now to, 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 to tell us what um, is the new project she's working on. Let me introduce to you Elizabeth Pullman. Yes. Uh, it's a pleasure and welcome again. Thank you. Now, when we were here the last time, we mainly focused on the jewelry, the little pieces stained of um, stained glass. Yeah. But you have done so much more yes. since then to now. Yes. Where do we start? Okay, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, as you know, I do stained glass. Mm -hmm. um, I've done several big projects, um, mostly in homes. Mm -hmm. uh, I have done one in um, St. Joseph. Um, church mm -hmm. and uh, um, since then I've migrated to a lot of different things one of which would include painting mm -hmm. and I mean this as in visual art painting I paint on um, palm fronds I paint on bamboo lots of local wood um, mahogany mm -hmm. teak um, also on canvas um, but I still do my stained glass. I do mosaics, mm. as you can see. Mm. Um, I also do recycle of bottles. Um, when you say recycle, can you explain? Uh, well, I take you. I take bottles that have been Old used. Bottles, right? Yeah. Well, you. All is subjective, okay, really. Okay. A bottle doesn't get old. Yeah, okay. right. <laughs> Possibly old from manufacture right, right, to yeah. time mm, to mm, now. Mm. But uh, since um, glass is not, um, cannot decompose, mm. um, bottle gla and glass, um, we, you can recycle it. Mm. You can recycle it. Um, I make lanterns, I make um, little dishes from them, and uh, you can make sculpture that we, you can have a look at mm -hmm. after. Um, uh, jewelry, you can smash them up and make beads, jewelry, all kinds of sort, sorts mm -hmm. of things. Um, also, um, I've been doing a lot of little different things that incorporate glass. Yeah. My mosaics are glass mosaics, not necessarily tile. Um, what else? Uh, jewelry. My jewelry have I, I fuse glass. Um, so all <coughs> my small bits of glass are used. I try very hard. Um, I crush glass. You will see with my penny earrings, mm -hmm. what um, I do is I fuse the glass onto the little pennies um, in a powdered form mm -hmm. and uh, create something totally different. So I use every bit of glass as much as possible. How do you go about getting your materials? Okay, um, unfortunately we don't manufacture stained glass here. Mm -hmm. So that is important. However, bottles, or not. I mean, we can uh, access bottles here readily. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, that is an imported item. How would you say, how would you look at the business from when you started to presently? Have you grown? Is it uh, expanding? Um, does the public have a better knowledge of your creativity and your work that you do? Um, okay. It has expanded a bit, and I would not, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say the public is wide, uh, widely aware mm. of stained glass. In fact, much people out there do not even know what stained glass is. Okay. Uh, until you mention, hey, the, the stained glass is the thing you see in the church. Um, 
the windows you see in the church. Even though stained glass is in fact a very, very old um, form of art, mm -hmm. um, lots of people do not know about it. And many people think that it is in fact painted. Of course, some parts of stained glass is painted, but it's painted with glass. Okay. and then fired and fused together. So when you order it, you get, you get the material already in the different assorted colors. And yes. Everything. You just have to shape now whatever you yes. use it to do. Yes. Okay. Um, it comes in the different colors and um, the colors are put in there permanently mm -hmm. using different metals. As I've said before, to get blue glass, they put in cobalt. To get green glass, copper. To get red glass, ruby. To get yellow glass, selenium. Different metals are put into the, 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 the mixture when the glass is being made. It's permanent. Um, it's not affected by UV rays because it's not painted. Okay. Yeah? Now, the material to get the glass, the, the, the stained glass, into the country, is it a uh, difficulty? How, how ready available it is for you to get it? Is it costly? Well, yes. Stained glass is a costly medium to work with. Mm -hmm. um, also, to put it together, um, we use copper and lead. So it's not the cheap, cheapest form of art. But it is one of the most durable. We've had, we have stained glass hundreds of years ago. Mm. Um, and, and, and will last hundreds more. It's just that um, it's not the cheapest item when it comes to um, making it. Where yeah. can one see your work or get like to purchase and things like that? Okay, um, unfortunately I, don't, I no longer have a shop. Um, so I'm um, at the San Antonio's Green Market every other Saturday. You can contact them for my details. Otherwise, you can call me at 384-9790. And um, you can look for me on Facebook, Elizabeth Pullman, or Art and Stained Glass by Liz Pullman. Okay. Now, right. let's talk a bit about the art now because I'm seeing that you have art pieces on palm and different things. Right. That's a new project you're working yes. on. How you got started in that, in the art? Um, okay, so the thing is, I, we have lots of palms in Trinidad. Um, and each one produces this palm frond from very small to very huge palm, um, fronds. Yeah. And uh, I decided one day that there must be something because it's really a piece of wood. In essence, mm -hmm. it looks like a piece of wood. We do have a few around if you want to see. Yeah. Um, yeah. You want me to go get one? We, we will, yeah. 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 Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a piece of wood, and um, just like any wood, you can make something out of it. Mm -hmm something durable, something momentous, and that's how I started with palm fronds. I, I thought it's a unique thing. Mm -hmm. It would be a unique thing. <laughs> how has the public accepted that? Okay, well, here's the thing. Um, I have to say, locally, they're not as enthused as our foreign counterparts. Okay. Yeah? Foreigners love it because they're buying a piece of art and they're taking back a piece of Trinidad. Yes, yeah. With them, right? Um, I'm still working on the appreciation of our locals with this project. Okay. Yeah? All right. Now, you have been doing this for how long? Okay, well, stained glass I've been doing for over 20 years. Um, that's stained glass, <coughs> that's jewelry, that's mosaic. Mm -hmm. 
the painting as in palm fronds and uh, bamboo etc I have only been doing for like two years okay yeah. how long does it take you to do uh, a piece of the palm well it depends on the size of the palm yeah. as you can see the unicorn is five feet this is about three feet the, the, the panda and I've actually came across a palm that was six feet okay right um, the thing is it all depends on what I'm painting and how big the palm is what sort of mood do you have to be in to do one of these pieces because I'm sure you just can't get up just like that and, and decide you must have an idea it starts with an idea right okay um, here's the thing when I started to do it and you, they're, they're, they're actually sold that's why I don't have it. I started with only local themes. Mm -hmm. We have like the ocelot, um, owls, um, things like that. Local, local birds and mm -hmm. birds as well. Um, okay, as far as your mood, hmm, that's hard to tell. It's hard to describe what one's mood is. The thing is, I do so much different art. Mm. And yeah, you do have to get in the mood. But it's the, it's, it starts it starts here first. It starts because, yeah. in up here. Yeah. Right. So one thing is Im it's important when you're working with palm fronds is that because palm fronds, each palm frond has its own shape. Mm -hmm. It has a characteristic of its own. So whatever you decide to put on that palm must, frond must coincide yeah, okay. with. The, yeah. the the yeah. the the so shape it, so of it the has to start correct. even before you 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 take up the paintbrush. Yes, you must have an idea that when this is finished, what, what is going to whatever you painting yeah. must coincide with the shape of this palm frond. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we need to take a short break. When we come back, we go we go visit some of the items, right. and you're going to tell us more about into details what um when he did so we'll be right back after the short break we will be right back after the short break stay tuned Welcome back viewers, welcome back to Las Cuevas and we are chatting with Elizabeth Pullman and we heard a lot about her projects that she is doing with glass, stained glass and now we are trying to get into her mind now because she's doing a different concept and that is painting on palm and to you all like myself, what is painting on palm? So we are going to start from the elementary stage and come up. So what she has in her hand here now is a normal palm branch. Okay, this is a palm frond. Right, explain okay. what is oh yeah. Alright, so everybody um, knows what a, okay, let's use a coconut tree mm -hmm. as an example. Mm -hmm. This is not a coconut palm however, but coconut is a palm and it's easy for you to see the concept. There's the leaves that um, put together on this huge branch. That branch is really a frond, yeah. right? The frond is attached to the trunk of the tree by this item, okay. right? So this is the item that we use for stained glass, okay. uh, for, for this, this, this is painting. Sim this is similar to right? the coconut branch, what we would have taken a long time to make cricket bat. That yes, part. Right, correct. Right, right. Correct. Right. Now this particular palm here was taken from uh, 
three-sided palm, mm -hmm. right? So I use different palms for different concepts. Here, I would paint uh, an elephant. Why? Because he has his trunk already. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. And I have, in fact, painted several elephants okay. from this palm. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's, I, that, I that, use, that's because of the... Yeah, I use the shape and the specific uh, characteristics of the palm to um, paint whatever I decide to paint on that. Okay. Now, how long will this last? Well, first of all, it has to do with how you treat the thing and how it's treated before it's painted. Oh, so you have to treat it before it's painted? Yes. How does that process take place? It first has to be termite treated because okay. this is in fact wood okay. and termites will attack it. So it has to be termite treated, then I water seal it and then I paint on it. Okay. Right? Like all paintings, if light constantly hit against it, it will fade. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Again, you won't put it outside in the rain, it is wood. <laughs> and if you put a lot like wood, it will deteriorate after time if not taken care of. So that's the start of the process, you treating everything. Right. Now, this here, this panda here, yes. is, is a comp this is a, different a, finished, palm. a finished product. Yes. Right? Now, this is a different palm to yes. this. Yes, that is what is called the squirrel tail palm. <laughs> okay, why, why, why the squirrel tail? I don't know, because it's the nature of the palm. It has these fronds like a tail. The, the, the palm frond look like a squirrel tail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a huge palm. Now, if you come across on this side yeah. here, right? It's a now, huge palm. Tell, tell me a bit about, about this. How long did this one take to do? Um, actually, it took about a week, mm -hmm. but the thing is, it's not a week every day, eight hours a okay, day. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Alright. And we have this piece here now. Okay, this is also a palm, and I can't quite remember which one, but it is a specifically different palm. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's very hard, yeah. uh, very sturdy, and because again of the nature of the shape of the palm. Am I to say this is a waterfall? Yes. Okay, because right? of because of how it's shaped. Okay, okay. Right? So what what I'm getting here is that when you take up a palm, yes. The painting that goes on it depicts the shape of the piece. Yes. Okay. Not necessarily depicts the shape of the piece, yeah. but the shape of the piece brings out what you decide okay. to paint on it. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move across here now to to this piece here. That is uh, <laughs> that is one of my very first paintings. Okay. Um, as you can see, it's a primitive nude. Right. <laughs> what I call a primitive nude. Right. Um, in the bush, and that is from a very common Chinese, what we call the Chinese palm. Mm -hmm. Right. A palm frond. It's a very again. It's treated, but at, you see the shape of the thing yeah. dictates what I might decide to paint on it. Mm -hmm. So I guess, I guess these are the pieces that you f when you first got yeah. into it, yeah. you started because yeah. you're seeing the progress into yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Into, into things, yeah. right? Yeah. But how how did how did you con the whole concept that, that you just get up a day and say, look, I want to start to print um, to paint on, on palm? Or is that the, well, no, actually, I, I was mulling again with this idea for a whole year before I okay. started. Okay. Of course, one has to find out what kind of paint is best on this and how to keep it. Because when one paints a beautiful thing on a palm and then it's not going to last, mm. then it's no point. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So it did take me a while. This here... Um, is also a Chinese palm. That one there is a royal palm. Mm. Um, the unicorn um, is in fact on a palmese palm, which okay. is a huge palm, as you okay. very well know. Okay. Yeah. Now, if we uh, that the one the one on the the, the unicorn, uh -huh. right? Um, how how long did that? Oh, the unicorn took me about. Mm, 
a week and a half, mm. pretty much. You can't take a bit of, 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 of work. Yeah, because that's a big piece that's five feet. Mm. Okay, now I'm looking at that piece. Um, the shape, uh -huh. I'm trying to get into my mind, because you said the shape sometimes brings out. Yes. What made you realize that that shape a unicorn will, 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 will come out of that. Okay, well, this would be very odd, but one morning, I got up, I really liked that palm, and that was the first thing I saw, a unicorn, and that's what this <laughs> decided me on that particular piece, okay. right? Yeah. That's the only piece like that, of course. Okay. But if you notice, there is a little hump on the palm, yeah. and the face, it, uh, it, come, it, it comes, comes out. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Mm. So it brings out the face that makes it look like it's projecting. Uh, you get almost what I would call a 3D mm. look with these um, things. Okay. This is. It's a lantern. Right. So right? I notice you have to cut the bottom off of yeah. the bottle. Yeah. So how this works is it just drops down. Like that, yeah. and you put in your little tea light. Yeah, a candle or whatever right? it is. And then you hang him up. Mm -hmm. This is a sapphire um, gin bottle. It underneath is cut out and um, sanded. And this little device is made up mm. so it can hang. Okay. Right? Um, this here. Is a Piedrax bottle that you can use as a dish. Normally it sits flat. This one doesn't, but mm -hmm. um, you can use as an ashtray, a dish. So this was an actual bottle? Yes. Right. Piedrax bottle. Piedrax bottle. Yes. How, what's the process of getting this to this? Okay, so first of all, the Piedrax bottle has to be cleaned thoroughly, the label has to be removed and it has to be thoroughly dried mm. inside out because uh, um, then it has to be uh, i make a mold i set the bottle on the mold it's placed in the kiln and then heated and it slumps into the mold okay okay all right, all right? very interesting this here is also you wouldn't believe this is a Bailey's bottle. It's a sculpture. Okay. Uh, I made from a Bailey's bottle, and again, this is heated to create this. You could could create different sculptures depending on how you maneuver this bottle inside the kiln. Okay. In this case, he was suspended by his neck. Oh, okay. Hanging. Okay, I guess this is where, this the is top. the top of the bottle where the cover, yes. right? Right. See, okay. that's where the the cork was. Yeah. And he's suspended, so when he starts to melt, okay, the majority of the bottle starts to pool around down here when it heat reaches the bottom, and then he has this nice elongated neck. Okay. See. I call him the eye to the other side. Okay, so I guess you have names for every piece. <laughs> well, not every every piece, yeah, but, but yeah. But yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now I know that we um we ought to take another break and when we come back we'll go downstairs because mm -hmm. you have a piece of art that right. you want to show us how it's been done. Yes. Right? So viewers, uh we'll be right back after the short break. Remember we are talking to the lady who does magic on glass and on palms. Mm -hmm.
Welcome back viewers, welcome back to the Squapers and we are in, actually in the workshop now and uh, Elizabeth is going to tell us or give us a little peek of how this angel is created. Now it takes a lot more time but she's going to quickly try to put it together so you the viewers can have a better idea of how it's been done. So this is the finished product of an angel, everything right. and this is glass. Yes. Right. Uh, this one all here is glass? Or no, no, this is um, zinc cane, a piece right. of cane, right. zinc. Okay, right. right? Right, so this is the finished product. Mm -hmm. How does the actual thing start? Okay, first it starts with a design, mm -hmm. a design and then a pattern. Mm -hmm. I have sort of very easily drawn out a, a, a pattern which has been used as you can see a few times. Yeah. Right? Um, and then the pattern has to be uh, reproduced and then cut into pieces. To the, yeah. Okay. Separate pieces, all the separate pieces, and then um, placed on the glass like this. Stay there. Like this and drawn out yeah each piece has to be drawn out like this mm -hmm. and then it's cut okay. so each piece is separately cut in stained glass unlike painting each piece is separately cut in a big panel you may have hundreds of pieces of glass in this case it's only two four six eight ten pieces mm. So this is pretty much 10 pieces, 10 pieces of yeah. glass okay. put together to create this, right? Um, the other thing is, this is glass. You need to be very, very cautious in handling it. The edges can cut you. See? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right? Uh, we have some basic tools, glass cutter running pliers different pliers we yeah. have this is a, a break in pliers and yet another break in pliers right usually the glass cutter must be lubricated there's usually oil inside here but i use oil down here anyways okay. so it's a simple my glasses see the lines so Now mind you, this looks very, very easy. But this it, takes practice okay. because to get a perfect cut, you have to have the perfect pressure. See? Okay. I can also cut that out with my hand as well. But we'll rather break it out with my hand, depending on the piece of glass in question. Breaking pliers, easy cut, yeah. Or do you? I'm, I'm fascinated like with the pieces that you, you you cut out. Do you sometimes use those for any other projects? Yes, all these other pieces I would. Um, this is grounded glass here. Okay. I could you I would use for jewelry. Okay. Right or. Um, smaller pieces for mosaics okay yeah so all the pieces you cut out why do you dip the cutter into the, the to oil? keep it lubricated okay, okay so you get a very good clean cut okay right usually it has inside here as well but mm. i like to keep it also keeps the the wheel clean okay because every time you cut a piece of glass, you get chips. See, so I've cut the whole thing pretty much. There we go. Right? So this is the body of the angel. This is part of the wing. 
Um, what happens now is that each piece of glass is grounded so you um, don't get cut yeah. on the edges, right? So I'll go do that and come back quickly. Okay. Yeah. Right, so we're back. I've grounded these two pieces of glass. The next thing that has to be hap happening here is we need to put um, an edge of copper foil, yeah? That will hold these pieces together. So here's our copper and I am going to just pull out some of it here. There we go. It goes on the absolute edge of the glass. You can see the copper on both sides. It sticks on, right? It sticks on. This okay. is adhesive that is in fact temporary so that when the heat goes on, along with the lead, it doesn't matter really, the adhesive. It's only a temporary adhesive, yeah? Then the edges has to be pushed down on both sides, like that. Usually we, leave, we use a little foil crimper, like that. And then it's rolled, so it's properly adhering to the glass, yeah? When all the pieces are put together, lead is then heated and melted on the copper that fuses it together, okay? Um, I don't know if that I want to do that because the fumes and all of yeah, that's yeah, inside yeah, of here, yeah. right? But that's pretty much how it goes. Um, so we will lay the pattern onto the piece of paper like that. And then when all the pieces are put together, we, we solder it and fuse it together with the lead. Yeah? Okay, so that's when you get the finished product. Yes, and then we have the finished product. We put in our, our steak and our seeds because this is a garden angel. Mm. Yeah? And there we are. Well, I think we have gotten a fair idea of what goes into producing um, this product. Um, is there anything you'd like to share with us before we wrap this interview? That you will want the public to know. Um, I know you already gave out your phone number and how to get in contact with you. Anything that you want to share with us? Um, only that I think we need to pay more attention to local artists. Um, we always believe everything foreign is better than what we have here. However, if you look around closely, you would find that we have more talent um, than we know. Um, we also have a lot of knowledge that we need to be that need, needs to be shared and uh, as far as art is concerned I think it's mostly an expression of not only the artist but our surroundings yeah what we see what we believe uh, how we think comes out in the art that we do yeah and we need to be more appreciative of our own local art thank you well, viewers, we hope that you did enjoy this segment here and you were enlightened. And if you need any further information, there will be numbers on the screen. There will also be uh, the name on the Facebook page. And uh, you can also find her at the Green Market in Santa Cruz every other Saturday. Ah. So feel free to contact her and show your support. And before we leave, we just want to let you all know that it's not all about glass and farm planting but 
it's palm painting fresh orange juice mm -hmm. but this is not for sale <laughs> this is for only who come to her residence <laughs> will get a taste of these orange which are planted right here on the premises so i will tell you how it tastes but you will get the other items <laughs> to buy not the orange juice <laughs> we hope to see you next time at another community stay tuned we we'll see you next week Thursday.